tinier so fast right now. Boros Convoke, Mono White Humans, Abzan, Grease Fane, and Nykthos are dominating the format. Lotus Fuel Combo needs to speed up, and today we're going to do just that thanks to Voyaging Seder. Today we're raising the floor on Lotus Field Combo's ability to win on turn 3 and we will be using Voyaging Seder. If you're unfamiliar, for 1 in a green you get a 1-2 Seder creature, you tap it and untap target land. So the idea is that you play this creature on turn 2 and then on turn 3 you play Lotus Field as your land for turn. You then untap it using the Voyaging Seder. And this essentially acts as a copy of Thespian Stage already in play. So from there you hit in strings the Lotus Field and the Voyaging Seder. You now have six mana. You can then Vizier the Tumbling Sands or some other untap effect to get you to emerge an ultimatum mana. That's the idea. And from there you can win the game. So basically we're just trying to be quicker because the current Pioneer environment is so fast. Speaking of the fast decks, Nykthos is a big one, and they have access to Damping Sphere in game one. Because of that, and its density in the metagame, we're playing four copies of Beseju, we cut a Temple of Mysteries. Damping Sphere is, in general, pretty popular as a sideboard card right now, and having access to four ways to blow them up without using a sideboard slot is incredibly, incredibly good. The other cut we made is we cut this second copy of Temple of Mysteries for the fourth copy of Balagad Recovery. If you missed my previous video, I show you how to win with Chandra's Hope's Beacon. You can find that video in the card above. So with Chandra's Hope's Beacon, you need three copies of Balagad Recovery. Well, today we're playing a fourth just in case one gets exiled to something like a go blank or you just have one in play. So today we have all four Balagads. It's a really small change, but if you want to play a Temple of Mystery, do whatever is best for you. That's my deck tech. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel, and I will see you in the first match. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the draw and we've opened up a stellar hand. We will keep. Our opponent has already taken a mulligan. All right, so it looks like we're facing Rakdos, a super popular deck in the current format. Goldfish has it listed as the second most popular deck. Here we're going to play the Balagad Recovery tapped as a land. And the reason we do that is... I want to guarantee the ability to keep Thespian Stage and Lotus Field around. In theory, I could have played the Forest on turn one, but if I draw something like a Sylvan Scrying, I want to be able to cast it on the second turn. Draw Hidden Strings, which is pretty good. All right, so we're looking at a hand that might be able to win on turn four without using a Grazer or a Voyaging Seder. The Attack with the Blood Tithe Harvester will fall to 17 life. They play a basic swamp and a bone crusher giant. You've got it. Aggressive start. The sage you. Okay. We'll play the lotus field and we will sacrifice these two lands. Next turn, we're looking to party. And by that, I mean win the game. They attack for seven. We'll fall to ten life. It looks like they're going to activate the blood token, discarding Fable and the Mirror Breaker. So we don't have to worry about shield dread here. Graveyard Trespasser. So here's one of the exile effects I talked about. They can exile the Balagad recovery, and we have four, so we don't have to care about that, which is just wonderful. All right, so it's our time to win another Hidden Strings. So at this point, mana is not going to be the concern. It's going to be payoff spells. So we need to draw like an Emergent Ultimatum, something like that. The fourth Hidden String. Wow. Okay, so let's add some blue mana. We will copy the Lotus Field. Hidden Strings will untap our pair of lands. Okay, and now we can cycle a Vizier. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw a card. Speaking of payoffs, we just found one. All right, so we're going to add a ton of mana here. Untap, untap. And this is just going to be a super easy game now. Hidden Strings. Let's Hidden Strings again. Yes, yes, no. Impulse. We'll take Omniscience. 
I can cast it without the emergent ultimatum, which is incredibly funny. Okay, so we don't even need all this mana now. Emergent ultimatum. All these. We'll get Leer, Behold, Dark Petition. And the game's just over. And our opponent concedes. Nice. Game two. I'm actually playing a full play set of Leyland of Sanctities today. I usually play three, but when you look at the Pioneer metagame, Rakdos is the second most popular deck in the format, and right behind it is actually Rakdos Sacrifice, a sacrifice-themed version of the deck with the cat-oven combo in it. And then just underneath that is Abzan Grease Fang. So I think the value of something like Leyland of Sanctity is just through the roof right now. And in these sort of matchups, I think you can actually board out the Voyaging Seder because the matchup isn't about speed. It's about consistency and not being disrupted too much. After that, a Boreal Grazer can come out. I think you want to depopulate. And then we have one extra card here. You could board in Zakama as a backup win condition that could also clear the board. Uh, you could also bring in a Path of Peril to slow them down. I think both of these are fine. You could also just keep in one Boreal Grazer. And that's what I'm going to do here. Because there's games in which you need to win with Layer of the Hydra, and you've already made your land drop. And having one Arboreal Grazer means you can put a land into play. And I think that's it's actually very, very, very helpful. So no Ley Line, but we've opened up a really good hand. I'm going to keep this. Turn 1, Thought Seize. Surprise, surprise. They take the Sylvan Scrying. Can't believe they would do that to me. I mean... Clearly, the better pick there was like a Hidden Strings or an Impulse, something like that. That's sarcasm. They play a Blood Crypt on turn two. Interesting, they played it untapped. What are you holding where that's your play? And we just draw Lotus Field. So lucky. Play Besaju, pass the turn. The answer was Stomp. I guess I probably could have figured that one out. Now they passed it their turn. We'll Impulse on their end step. Liliana of the Veil. Okay. She's not a very nice lady. We'll cast Impulse. Looking for something. We'll just take a, a land here. This can be our card that we discard to the Liliana. Discard the Sanctum. They discard Shieldred, which means that they might have two. Perfect timing, Leyline. Alright, Impulse again. We find the Emergent Ultimatum. I think we want that. Play Lotus Field, pass the turn. So we have the Ley Line that we can discard next turn. I don't think we have the ability to emerge an ultimatum. So I could hit in strings, but I think we're a mana short or a color short. No, I only have six mana next turn. Because you play Thespian Stage, you untap, you float two, go blank. No! That's so brutal. Ah, oh, not having the ley line here. Devastating. Okay. We're just going to copy. That hurt. So we're stuck in an interesting spot here we, where we have to decide between discarding the impulse or the hidden strings. So if I discard the hidden strings and I draw an ultimatum, we just win the game. But we only have two ultimatums. Uh, Dark Petition doesn't do it because I don't have a graveyard anymore. I guess I'm discarding the impulse. The problem with keeping impulse is like it could only find something that costs four unless I draw an untapped land. I think it's just got to be the impulse. Now they play the Bone Crusher. Come on, Doc, be good to me. Draw. They'll get recovery. Not quite. We'll cast it, get back the impulse. Pass the turn. We're going to respond to the Liliana and we will cast impulse. Four over pages is our best find here. We find Ultimatum, which would have been good last turn. But now I have to discard something. And if I take Ultimatum here, I actually can't do anything with it. So I think the actual right pick here is taking Thespian Stage. It seems wild, but I think it's just correct. Or I could discard the Thespian Stage. So basically, my choice here is like, I could take the stage and plan for our opponent using Liliana Ultimate. And that would leave me with two Lotus Fields. I think I'm going to play conservatively here and discard the Hidden Springs. It's going to bite me in the butt if I draw Dark Petition or the last Emergent Ultimatum. But those are three cards in my deck. 
All right, we'll take four down to 14. This game is not lost. We can still win this. Draw. To sage you. Pass the turn. They plus the lily. Okay, we'll discard the besage you. They discard another shield red. They play a shadow. We'll copy. Dark petition or emergent ultimatum would now win the game. And we didn't need to hold on to hidden strings to do it. And we're still a little bit insulated from the Lilian ultimate, but because we took the Thespian stage. So we're going to 10 here. Next turn they have six, nine, so a land would kill me. Draw. Atawara. We'll pass. So this would be lethal here. I'm going to respond and bounce their shadow so that way I don't die. Okay, so now they'll discard their sh their creature, and that actually just bought me two turns. They attack, I go to six. Please, deck. I'm a mana short of omniscience. Ah, that's brutal. That's going to make winning very difficult. They plus the lily. All right, so we go to two here. Draw. It buys time. Depopulate. Pass. Now they're going to use the Liliana ultimate. We will sacrifice pile two. Draw for turn. About time we found one of those. I mean, I think it's a little too late at this point because we lost the omniscience. Untap, untap. Okay, so that was actually insane. That was like a perfect three cards. Can we do this? Pour over the pages. Untap, untap. Also insane. Okay. Or again, maybe I should have cycled first. Ended up not mattering. Okay, let's cycle the Vizier. Untap, draw, another Lotus Field. I guess I can play my land for turn. We'll add three black. Dark Petition, grab Hidden Strings. Hidden Strings, yes, yes, no. Play Leer. Hey, we got there. Yes. 1-0 over Rakdos. Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play. So we've opened up the Voyaging Seder and a Lotus Field, but we only have one land. This hand could be a turn three, assuming I draw a land. Pretty greedy, but I also want the turn three win. All right, don't tell anyone. If you watch this and I don't draw the second land on turn two, let's just pretend that I did. All right, Belly Good Recovery passed the turn. How badly I want a turn three with this deck. Island, okay. Come on, deck, land, land, land. Boom! Had it the whole time. You didn't believe in me. Voyaging Seder, pass the turn. Planes? Okay. Can we do it? Behold the beyond. So we have to worry about Sensor, Dovin's Veto. There's actually a bunch of stuff here. We'll float mana. Play Lotus Field. I wonder if I could actually win through the blue mana. Can we win through a counterspell here? Hidden strings, hidden strings. Yes, yes. And do I want to cipher? Um, well, currently, actually, I think it makes an extra mana. Am I wrong? Because it would untap itself, too. Or is that the same? I think it's the same. So we'll put it to the graveyard. Blue, untap. Black, hidden strings. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> I talked about it in the deck deck and I was like, you know, I'm so unlikely to turn three. Here we are. And now we could tap for green. This seems unreal to me. Merge an ultimatum. Okay, so we want Leer. We want Omniscience. And what's the next one? It could be Dark Petition. It could also be another Hidden Strings. I think I want another Hidden Strings, actually. So 
So we'll target Blazing Seder Lotus Field, and then Omniscience. Untap. Now we'll tap for mana. Omniscience. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. Emerge an Ultimatum from Hand. Dark Petition. Chandra. Lear. <laughs> Turn 3 Wind! Yes, we did it! I'm so pumped right now. Ah, oh, that was sweet. Take that, Azorius. We also did it through a counter spell. We tapped their blue land and then we won. Ah, oh, that was awesome. I love it. Whew. All right, that just made the video for me. We want the thought distortions. Take out a couple copies of Grazer. So one thing I did when building my sideboard for today is Azorius is like the fifth or sixth most popular deck in the format. I acknowledged that I was going to make my sideboard a little bit worse in this matchup so I could be better in other matchups. That said, Thought Distortion, it's time for this card to come back because a lot of Azorius lists aren't playing Narset's Reversal anymore, which makes this card way better. So from there, you can leave in Grazers for your ability to win with Lair of the Hydra, um, which I think is fine. You could also like bring in a needle to name like Teferi or Narset or anything like that. You could also name like Shark Typhoon. Like there's a number of things you can name with Needle instead of the Grazer. But I would personally always leave in at least one Grazer and then you could like leave, and then you could bring in one other card. If that one other card could be a Zakama, it could be a Needle, whatever. Um, I think I'm going to choose to leave the Grazer. Because it also just blocks a small shark for a long time and I think that's just fine. So we have the Thought Distortion, what we don't have is a second land. I'm going to Mulligan. Sure, we'll keep this. Get rid of the second hidden string. Or I can just play it slow and get rid of the grazer. I think that's actually just better here. They play a turn one farmland. Chandra. Pass the turn. They have an Ottawara. So I could jam the scrying right now. They, they could have a sensor or some other card. Um Dovin's Veto, Negate. I'm not going to play the Scrying. I think it's like kind of a trap to just play it into open man. Impulse. Oh, this is what we're doing. Okay. Let's go get our Thespian Stage. Play Lotus Field. Pass the turn. If our opponent taps out, which I don't know why they would, if they did, we could theoretically try for a win here. The Fairy will untap the Lotus Field. Yep. So they'll have four mana next turn. Lotus Field, like this was their by far their best start. Like not even close. So we're really looking for the Thought Distortion at this point. It's probably the only way we can win. Stage. We'll just copy now. If you wait, they could play a Field of Ruin, and we just don't want to, that to happen to us. They could also discontinuity a Thought Distortion so that it doesn't resolve, which is pretty interesting. I mean, I can't complain about our opponent having their best possible start with what I did in game. I feel like that would be unfair. <laughs> All right, so they play a Hallowed Fountain untapped. Main phase memory deluge, which makes sense because they can untap the lands with the Teferi. And they're just going to pass with a bunch of open mana. They have eight cards in hand, so they actually have to discard. They discard a cycle land. Another hidden strings. Okay, we're just going to keep on making lands. Pass the turn. That is a big shark. Okay. They have nine cards in hand now. They play another land. Eight cards in hand. We'll take five down to 15. Not feeling good. Like, I, the, I think the only way we can win this is if I somehow find Thought Dist They Impulse. They discard Farewell. Hmm. Let's play a Grazer. It's just a speed bump for the shark. I think I'm going to hold the Besage you for now. The Wandering Emperor, got it. They plus the Teferi all the way up to eight. So we need to make a decision about what we're going to do about the Teferi ultimate, but I don't actually have any permanents that really care other than this Grazer. We'll block at 12. They have their own Thespians. All right, sure. I don't know how we're actually supposed to win this. They just seem like they're so far ahead. Play the forest and pass. I mean, they need to not have a discontinuity and we need to draw a thought distortion. Like that's pretty much it. They cast a memory deluge. 
with flashback. So they get two cards here. Impulse. Yeah, they've seen so many cards. They definitely have a discount. I'm, uh, I guess I should take my draw step. It just seems so unlikely. We'll take nine down to three. Rick Proctor. Okay. So they're going to clean up and they're discarding three cards here. Sphinx's Revelation and a pair of Teferi. We draw a Vizier. Let's cycle Vizier and hope. I mean, it's the best we can do here. Draw. Okay. Attempt to pour over the pages. Dovin's Veto. Surprise, surprise. All right. Attempt a hidden string. Another Dovin's Veto. Play bit my besage you. Hidden strings. This one resolves. Okay. Hidden strings again. They have five cards. Dark Petition? I guess in theory I could have played the Chandra and then Dark Petition, but if Chandra gets countered, I can't win. They have another Dovin's Veto. Okay. Next game. I think I'm going to bring the Needles over the Grazer. Let's try this. Because naming to Fairy means that they're not able to play the Lotus Field game the way that they want. On the play. Oh, I left him Voyaging Seder? I didn't even realize that. Whoops. Uh, well, I guess I don't have anything to board out. Like, I could have brought in a third needle instead of these. Uh, one land. I mean, I'd love to turn to Scrying, but we don't have a land. Let's Mulligan. This is pretty good. I think we bottom Dark Petition. Turn one Sanctum, pass the turn. They have an Irrigated Farm. The Sage is actually great. Because we can, in theory, blow them out. Let's take Hidden Strings here. So if... They go for the discontinuity play. I can, well, I guess, no, that doesn't work. Because they don't have to sacrifice the land, so that actually doesn't work the way I want it. Valigad, play the Lotus Field. We'll pass the turn. Rick Proctor, so now they can play Lotus Field. Yep. So, I mean, they've had two really good starts in both post board games. Uh, I mean, that was a fine draw for us. We'll... Play this out now as a land because we have another Lotus Field the hard way in two. They have six mana. And I am now being thought distortioned. Okay. Brutal, but not the end of the world. Okay, so the question is, do I play the the Leer into possible removal? We saw that they left in farewell, but if they don't have the removal, it gives me a potential to win the game. On deck. Sylvan Scrying. So I could just go get uh, stage here, but I don't even think that's very good. I think I'm just going to jam Leer. Hope for the best. We have a Memory Deluge. Our best draw by far, like if I could pick any card to draw on our next turn right now, would be a Pour Over the Pages. Because we could float mana, play Lotus Field, pour, make a mana, flashback pour, and be back in this game. But it looks like I'm going to get to keep my Leer for a turn cycle. Okay, come on, Doc. Pretty please. Please be poor the pages. Come on. Let's see it. Draw. Needle. All right, let's play the needle. We'll name to fairy, assuming that it resolves. Oh, it can't be countered. <laughs> yes. The fairy hero of Dominaria. Which will also protect our Leer. We can Sylvan Scrying. Grab. Lair of the Hydra. Scrying again. Grab Ottawara. Play Lotus Field. Oh, we don't have to sacrifice lands because of the Strict Proctor. I forgot about that. That it was symmetrical. Okay, so that was a play mistake on my part. We will not attack with Leer. So the Wandering Emperor is a card in our opponent's deck that three points of damage does not matter. They have a Thespian Stage. We need them to not have a removal. They attack. We can't block because it has flying. We'll take one down to 17 life. We draw a hidden string. Doesn't do a whole lot. Play the layer of the Hydra. And we'll just pass the turn. They cycle a shark. 6-6. Six, six. Okay. Castle Vantress. I think I'm supposed to bounce the shark here. All right. Well, Ottawara the shark. Tap properly because it only costs three because we have a legend. I'll take one. We have so many cards that we could have drawn the last three turns to win this game. But we've just sort of drawn blanks. Like, I'd love even an impulse at this point. 
Draw. Okay. I guess that evens the playing field a little bit. Thought distortion. There's discontinuity, so the turn just ends, and it's exiled. That's a bummer. Okay, so we'll take one, we go to 15. Yeah, I mean, we knew it was a possibility. Another besage you. So I could be attacking with the layer of the Hydra, but I maybe I'm just a coward. I'm like pretty confident they have a Wandering Emperor. Maybe I should just do it. Maybe I might be playing too afraid. Maybe I should have attacked with the Hydra there. I think I'm going to destroy their castle. I don't want them scrying every turn. Does this thing have reach? It does not have reach. You know, just double checking. The impulse. And another impulse. It's kind of insane how few spells we've drawn this game. Uh, eight total? And technically, I had a bunch of them exiled before I could really do anything. <laughs> Yeah, we'll take one. We're at 14. Okay. Draw for turn. Sylvan again. Cast it. I think we want Besage you. And then we'll Sylvan again. Grab a Lotus Field. Play the field. The ability's countered. And we'll just pass the turn. I don't want to attack for four. Like, they could cycle a shark and embarrass me that way. Another memory deluge. And again. So they've seen almost their entire deck at this point. We know that they had a farewell in their deck in game two. So unless they boarded it out for game three, they haven't answered a leer that we know of. Okay, I'll take one. I go to 13. I have to discard three cards here. The fairy changed the equation. Juari disruption. Okay. What? Is this a card that doesn't stink? That's crazy. All right, so here's another discontinuity coming. Narset's reversal. Okay, so they do have that in their deck, but now they get to pour her the pages. Most lists aren't playing this anymore. Attempt to go to combat. Revelation for four. Okay, I will try to pour her the pages again. Another Narset's reversal. Okay. Shame on me for not starting on hidden strings, I guess, versus the discontinuity deck. I am now dead if they have a Shark Typhoon. It looks like they have it. Yeah, they're just tapping out it. They know that they have lethal. Yep. So if I had a blue land in my hand, we'd have a window here. But I don't, and now we're dead. All right. Well, GG's opponent. That was an insane round. I mean, we got a turn three win. I'll take that any day of the week in Pioneer. So I'll take a match loss. We'll get a turn three win. And our opponent's deck was super cool. I mean, I've, I've seen these Lotus Field control decks before. But I'll be honest, they've never really impressed me. Here, this build looked particularly good in my opinion. We're one and one, still three matches left. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number three, we're on the draw. We have an Arboreal Grazer and no access to Lotus Field, so I think you're supposed to mulligan this. This is a little bit better. We'll keep and get rid of the extra Thespian stage. Let's go. In between matches, I looked up the list our opponent was playing and it's tough because I would have, like, our sideboard would have been very good against the traditional Azorius control deck, but our opponent wasn't playing that. Instead, they were playing the Lotus Field version of the deck, and what an insane draw that was. Um, so, a little disappointed that we lost that match, but I shouldn't, like, according to Goldfish, that version of the deck is less than 1% of the metagame. I shouldn't be building my sideboard for a 1% of the metagame deck. Uh, I mean, our opponent's deck was super sweet. It did really, really well. I was impressed. But I just don't think you should be trying to build your cyborg to be absolutely everything is kind of my point here. Valia. Okay. We'll just play a Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Okay, so now they have an Adeline. When they attack, they'll get to create a soldier. 
I guess it's just a human. It's not a soldier. We'll block the Thalia. Okay. Another Vizier. We will copy our Lotus Field. And next turn, Chandra actually looks pretty darn good right now. Because Chandra will be able to kill the Thalia. They have land number four, and then the Copper Coat Vanguard, which gives their Thalia Ward one. So things are starting to look a little bit hairy for us. Okay. We're going to have to block the Adeline so that way we can soak up the most damage. All right, we're at 10 life. We have to find a way to win through Thalia. <laughs> and I drew the Chandra. All right, so let's just, let's do what we can first. So we're going to untap, draw, player land for turn, cycle the vizier, untap, draw. Okay, so Chandra is going to cost seven. Okay, and then in order to kill the Thalia, we'll have to pay one. So effectively, she costs eight. I can't hidden strings after to copy with the Chandra. It's just not an option. So I think I'm supposed to. Do this now we get a little bit less mana out of it but it's just the right move then we'll tap the lotus field for blue play the chandra so we're in a weird i guess i could win by bouncing the chandra later if i want to double up an impulse here we'll kill chandra and the opponent and then we'll pay the ward one yes all right, so now the next spell we cast is copied. I'm going to have the impulse be copied just so that way we don't fizzle. Well, it reduces our chances of fizzling. All right, so we if I would have hidden strings first, that would have been a win. But if it would have been blanks, that's a loss. So we now need to find more mana off this impulse. Uh, I think that might do it. I'm not positive. So now we hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. All right, so black. No, it has to be blue green. Does this work? Blue green. The colors don't work. If I get back hidden strings, I think I'm dead. I took the safer line and it ended up costing me. So, bail again, recovery. So, the problem is I can get to seven, but the colors don't work. So Lotus Field gets back Hidden Strings. I cast Lotus Field Floating a Blue. And then I can make... Yeah, it just doesn't work. I think I'm just dead. So I could get back Grazer and hope to live a turn. I'd block the Adeline. And then they have 11 damage. That doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, okay. We just have to go to the next. Unfortunate. That was a tough loss. I feel like that was my game to lose. So now we do the Sakama plan. Get rid of Behold. The Ultimatums. Omniscience. One more card needs to be boarded out. Maybe a Seder? Let's try this. Uh, I mean, I think you could hit in strings first there. It's just way more risky if you brick. This hand's good. We'll keep... Like, we missed on three hidden strings. I'm sorry, two hidden strings, two viziers, four pour over the pages. So we had eight hits with four looks. Play the bell again, pass the turn. Recruitment officer. Path of Peril's a good one. Boreal Grazer. Play Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Mutavolt. Into Vanguard. I'll take three. The other is a comma. Okay, I don't love that one as much. We will copy. Pass the turn. Okay, so they... Oh, I meant to block. I meant to block. Whoops. That was a mistake. Okay, so we can hit in strings here. I meant to block. I'm a dummy. All right, untap, untap. So now we can do red, green. Play a comma. Let's deal three to the Rindane, or whatever it's called. And I'm just going to Path of Peril. Because even if they have a creature that would remove my Sakama here, I'm not taking a bunch of damage. So I'm just reducing risk. And our opponent can see. 
All right, well, that was game two. We have Voyaging Seder, Path of Peril. I like this. This is a turn three Wrath if we want to. Our opponent mulligans to six. Turn one Recruitment Officer. Play the Balagad Recovery, pass the turn. Mutavolt. Invasion of something. They exile a card from my hand and it costs two more to cast. So they take the Path of Peril. Then they attack the Invasion down to one. We will play the Voyaging Seder. Pass the turn. All right, so now they're going to animate the Mutavolt, and they're going to double attack the Invasion. And this will make it so that their creatures get larger, but also they have an indestructible effect in play. So it's going to make my Wrath plan a lot worse. Helpful Initiate. Okay. Leer. That's pretty interesting. So we'll play Lotus Field, sacrifice these. Like, I have a window to potentially try to do something here. So far, this league, I've been really impressed by the Voyaging Satyrs. Like, this is another spot where just not needing to have uh, Thespian Stage is so huge. Maybe I shouldn't even board it out the second copy. All right, these two lands go to our graveyard. We will untap the Lotus Field. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. Make blue. Untap the Lotus Field. Now we'll tap the Lotus Field again. And we'll play Leer. Three mana, or I'm sorry, four mana floating. Hidden strings. We'll use the green. Yes, yes, and yes, because it's going to be exiled anyway, we can siphon onto the Leer. I think I might have clicked OK one too many times, and I think we're about to lose two blue from my mana pool. That's unfortunate. No, I didn't. OK, we'll cast Impulse. We find another hidden strings. Cast another Impulse. Take a Vizier, untap the Lotus Field. Now we'll cycle the Vizier, untap, draw a card. We find Atawara. We've played our land for the turn. We'll hit in strings again. Cast Impulse from the graveyard. We find more Viziers. We'll take one of those. Those can go on the bottom. Cycle Vizier, draw a card. Currently have eight mana. But we still have a hidden strings in the graveyard. Impulse again. We find Zakama. We'll take Zakama. All right, let's add three green. Untap the Lotus Field. That's six. Add three blue. All right, it's free to bail again here, so I'm going to do it. Return the hidden strings. Now we'll hidden strings on our two permanents. This is effectively another turn three win. So this brings us up to seven. We'll do blue, untap. This time we'll do green. Hidden strings, untap, untap. Yes, yes, and yes. We'll put it onto the Voyaging Seder. Now we'll tap for white, untap, tap for red, play Zakama. Zakama will untap our lands. And I can now try to bounce the siege. And when they try to give something indestructible, I can kill it. So tap for blue. Bounce the siege. And we'll respond by killing the recruitment officer. Pass the turn. To me, this is a turn three win. Um, I mean, you don't have to agree with me because I didn't actually deal lethal. But we are not a deck post board in this matchup that is going to combo win. So this was th another turn three in my opinion. Uh, destroy evil. That's fine. Like we're so far ahead right now. Ritual of such. I'm going to sit on that one. We can play the layer. That for three blue. Impulse. Big vizier. Uh, maybe I should have taken the battle again. That might have been a small mistake. Uh, tap the hydra. Untap lotus field. Draw a card. Chandra. I like you. Red, untap. Blue, play Chandra. We'll plus Chandra to make two mana. Blue, blue. And now I get to impulse twice. Take Zakama. They can in strings. And now we'll attack, and if they don't block, I get to Zakama this turn. So now we get to hidden strings off the cipher. We'll untap Voyaging Seder in the Lotus Field. Yes, yes. Blue, 
untap, tap for red, hidden strings, yes, yes, no, tap for white, untap, tap for green, we'll play as a comma. Okay, untaps, and we will kill their hopeful initiate. Pass the turn. Dinosaur control. That's what I'm here for. They play a second mutavault. And then the Redane. That's fine. We can just shoot it with the Zakama. Shoot it. Then we'll attack for 13. And then we can just minus Chandra for victory. Swing. Hidden strings. Untap. Untap. Oh, I picked the same targets for both. Whoops. And I... Ah, uh, yeah, I messed this up. Oh, I guess I didn't. Okay. So now they're at four, and we can just minus the Chandra. That was a pretty sweet match. Uh, another turn three combo. We're feeling pretty good about this. Two and one, two matches left. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. All right, time for match number four. We are on the draw. We have a hand with turn one Grazer into turn two Impulse. If we find Lotus Field, this hand becomes insane. If we don't, we're going to flounder a little bit. I think I'm going to try it. Overgrown Tomb. Stitcher Supplier. Okay. Spicy deck. We find Balagad Recovery. Play the Grazer. Put Layer of the Hydra in. This looks like the standard deck I used to play. Where it was like Collected Company and like Nantuka Husks. But I'm not really sure what our opponent's doing. Obviously you have the Zulu Park Cutthroat. Oh, is it just Rally? It might just be Rally. Alright, so they play a Priest. We find Omniscience. Alright, Doc, I'm asking you for a Lotus Field. Not quite. I guess we'll take a stage. Play stage. Pass the turn. Land number three. Whoa, Strider. Are you on the Citadel deck that actually plays... I mean, they might be on the Citadel deck. Typically, that's a Jun deck, but they have the shell for it here. We'll sacrifice our Grazer. They play a Fiend Artisan that's a 6-6. Six, six. Big creature. Draw Dark Petition. I think we're supposed to cycle the Vizier here. Untap the Sanctum. Draw Besaju. Play the land. And I think we're supposed to bail get back Impulse, but... If we have to impulse next turn, there's a good chance we don't win. All right, take the impulse. Pass. So now they're attacking for nine, and I'm going to fall to nine life. And there's rally. Yeah, I think I'm dead to this rally. They have eight creatures, and one of them is a blister pod, so that should be lethal. Wait, do you have two Zulu Park cutthroats? I only see one. Am I blind? Oh, it's because they sacrificed two creatures. I see. Yeah, that's definitely lethal. All right. Rather than make them click through, we can go to the next one. Yeah, we just got turned forward by Rally. That was pretty sweet. Okay. Do I even want a cyborg? I don't think I do. Like, I, I could bring in Path of Peril against the Rally deck, but is that even good? I think my plan is just to race. Resubmit. On the play for game two. Yeah, we'll keep this. Play Besaju. Grazer. Put the layer of the Hydra in. We'll pass the turn. Duress. So it's either poor or dark petition. They take the poor over the pages. So I guess I could bring in ley lines. I'm not in love with that, but it's an option. Pass the turn. They have a tap land. Another duress. All right, so I'm probably going... If Assuming that I win this game, I'm going to bring in Leyline for game three because they probably have Thoughtseize on top of these duresses. You draw poor. Okay, I'm going to just play out the Vizier here to act as my other uh, copy of Lotus Field. We'll play the Balagad. Pass. I want the Balagad in play. Like, if they have a third discard spell, congratulations. But the Balagad being in play matters a lot for the poor, so that's why I played it out. Ghost Rider, sure. Okay, another Lotus Field. Untap the field. Tap Lotus Field. Pour over the pages. 
we will discard Lotus Field, play the stage, copy field, cycle Vizier, and this will bring me up to five mana, which means we can cast Pour Over the Pages and untap both lands. Another Grazer, play Pour. Chandra, discard the stage, well, Hidden Strings. Actually, is that even good? So, okay, let's just talk through this. If I play Chandra and then Minus, I could cast something that costs four or less until the end of the turn. Like, I don't think that's actually a good play. So instead, why don't we tap this for red? We'll play Chandra and we'll just kill both their creatures. They sacrifice and scry, which is fine. Now we'll pass the turn. Seder Wayfinder. They did find a land and then three creatures, which is the perfect Seder Wayfinder. Because it fills their graveyard up for rally. And that wins the game. Okay, sweet. Hidden strings. Copy. And the opponent concedes. Nice. Alright, game three. I definitely want the ley line. We'll board out grazers. Or do I want to board out Seder Wayfinder? Yeah, let's board out Satyrs. Bring two grazer back in. Submit. They kept seven. Our entire hand hinges on us getting two draw steps with this Sylvan Scrying. I feel like that's a lot. Because the rest of our hand doesn't do anything, I'm going to mulligan. This hand stinks, we'll go to five. The best hand we've seen. Bottom Dark Petition and Besage You. Playline into play, let's go. Overgrown Tomb Stitcher Supplier. Dress in a Fiend Artisan. Hidden Strings is not bad. A second Overgrown Tomb, Seder Wayfinder. They find three lands and one Stitcher Supplier. They keep a Concealed Courtyard. We'll follow the 19 life. They have five cards in hand, one of which is a land. Wow, what a draw. Okay, so now we just have to find a payoff for this impulse. We'll take the Chandra, although I wish that it was something else right here. Pass the turn. Anchor Bloom. Destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, proliferate. So they have a way of blowing up our ley line. Pour over the pages. We have to play the Lotus Field here. So if they have a discard spell in hand, they can use it next turn. Fiend Artisan. I mean, we're in rough shape here. Unlicensed Hearse. So they're attacking for how much? Six. So I'm going to 11. Next turn they have... Nine? I mean, I'm almost dead here. Merge an ultimatum. What to do, what to do. So I could play Chandra. That's a choice that I have. Because I could hit in strings, play Chandra, minus three, killing the Kinker Bloom and the Fiend Artisan, and hope that their last card in hand doesn't do anything. So let's talk through this. Uh, so let's say that's the play I make. I guess they also get to tutor a creature with the Fiend Artisan. But that would leave me at a higher life total. So if I play the Chandra, killing the Kanker Bloom and the Fiend Artisan, they then attack my Chandra for two, and then attack me for one. I go to ten. Their unlicensed curse grows twice. So I just really need their hand to be garbage. And if their hand is garbage, hypothetically, would it be better if I just copied and passed? I mean, the other line here is that I hidden strings in a pour over the pages, but like I just don't feel like that one is likely to be successful. But I don't love the Chandra line, is the issue. And if I hidden strings pour copy pass, I don't have an easy win next turn. I'm also dead to... Okay, well, here's another thought. They end step using licensed terse. I'm dead to any creature that crews in licensed terse. Ugh. Maybe it is supposed to just be Chandra then. Hope that she buys me enough time. Yes, yes, no. So if I cut or if I cast pour over the pages here, I'd have one mana floating, I'd have five untapped. So any vizier would mean that I could still Chandra. And I haven't seen any viziers yet. Should I pour? You know what? I'm going to pour. Okay, come on, deck, please don't fail me. Okay. That was actually pretty good. Discard the stage. Half for three blue. We'll cycle Vizier, untap the Lotus Field, draw a card. Fail again recovery. So what if we played Chandra and Plust? 
putting the grazer into play. No, I don't think that does it. All right, so we'll kill the Kenker Bloom and the Fiend Artisan. And now I have to pass. They use the hearse, exiling two cards. So they're going to kill the Chandra here, and I'll take one. So with the Chandra being dead, I have to win with Layer of the Hydra. Tap for green. Copy. Sure. Play the Balagad Recovery. Play Grazer. Pass the turn. Layer of the Hydra is my only win condition right now. A 5-5 five, five Fiend Artisan is their last card. Interesting, they're not going to attack with the hearse. We'll block one, take three down to seven. 13 minutes on the clock. Blue, blue, quota green, pass poor. Untap, untap, discard grazer. And I'm going to pour again. Untap, untap, discard stage. Cycle vizier, untap lotus field. Draw. Leer. I like Leer. Let's cast an ultimatum. Omniscience for Dark Petition. I'm trying to bait my opponent here. It might not be obvious, but I only have two instants and sorceries in the graveyard. They can cut me off with Spell Mastery with the Hearse. Okay, Dark Petition. They don't respond. Okay, so I'm going to go up to six mana. I could get Omniscience here. I think that's the play. And now we pour. Untap, untap. Discard scrying. So I didn't hit a hidden strings there. So I think I'm actually not supposed like I could leer. And this leaves me enough with enough mana to emerge an ultimatum. So they're probably going to respond to Leer. They remove Dark Petition and Pour. It's worth noting my other grazer is in the graveyard, and I need to either bounce the one in play or Bring this one back in order to win. All right, we will pour over the pages. We found a hidden string. Discard a land. We'll cast pour again. 10 minutes on clock should be plenty. Untap, untap. We'll discard Sylvan Scrying. All right, so I can now hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Tap for three blue. Play the Omniscience. Sylvan Scrying. Pick up our layer of the Hydra. Oh, we haven't even played a land yet this turn. We'll play the layer. Okay. And now we can return hidden strings. Tap for blue. Hidden strings, untap, untap. Yes, yes, no. Make some more mana, hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. We'll Ottawara the Fiend Artisan. And then we can Impulse for free. Grab Balagad Recovery. Balagad Recovery back Hidden Strings to make mana. Hidden Strings untap, untap. And now we can emerge an ultimatum. Hidden Strings. Dark Petition, Behold the Beyond. Cast Strings on our lands. And then Dark Petition. I'm going to float mana. Dark Petition. We'll grab Behold the Beyond. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. And our opponent concedes. They see the writing on the wall. We are now three and one. Let's go. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as seven tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. We are playing for the 4-1 on the play for match number 5. Double Grazer, no Lotus Field. Nope. Yeah, this hand seems great. We'll keep. I think the extra card in this hand is the Impulse. We just don't need that. We'll lead on Layer of the Hydra and pass the turn. This was my fear. The, the punish for putting Impulse on the bottom. No! <laughs> oh, brutal. I was like, the only way this could bite me, and I was I was thinking in my head, I was like, is if they lead on turn one swamp discard. We find impulse anyway. But, ah, uh, wow. Brutal. So it looks like they're on Grease Fang. They definitely are on Grease Fang. They find Grease Fang off the Grizzly Salvage. It goes to the graveyard. 
So they already have a Grease Fang in hand. Okay. Full Impulse. We find Scrying. That was good. And then we find Lotus Field. So I guess we'll cast this Scrying because we can. Grab a Besaju. Play Lotus Field. Pass the turn. They have Thicket. So this could be a Grease Fang. They don't. Instead, they play Rafine's Informant. Discard Sky Sovereign. That's fine by me. We find Grazer. We'll copy Lotus Field. Play the Grazer. And we'll just put the Besaju into play. They have land four. Here's the Grease Fang. Their Sky Sovereign will kill it. But it's not, you know, a, a Parhelion killing us. So I think I'm okay with this. Now they attack for 9, we'll go to 11. Time to party. We will begin with a pour over the pages. Okay, that could have been a little bit better for us. Let's impulse. Another pour. We'll cast that. And there's the ultimatum for the victory. Love it. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Green. Black, Ultimatum, Omniscience, Dark Petition, Leer. I don't want to discard my... I guess I could discard my hand. Like, Bail Get Recovery isn't that good. Let's get Behold the Beyond. And a Concession. Nice. We want Leyline of Sanctity. It's interesting. So I've heard a couple different sideboarding philosophies for this matchup. One is that you're supposed to board out Grazers because... They're not great against discard decks, but we're bringing in Ley Lines. So I think that's not necessarily the truest thing. Uh, another thing that I've heard is like, well, one, I like Grazer because it blocks Parhelion, so that way you actually get extra turns. And Voyaging Sater is good because it speeds you up as well, which is the same thing that Grazer does. Against Mono Green Devotion, a lot of people like boarding out Impulse Effects because you don't have time to cast them in a lot. I actually kind of want to try that here. So that way we're keeping the speed we get discard protection. We're just losing a little bit of consistency with the impulses. This hand's amazing. I mean, it's going to get discarded to death, but I'm keeping it. Opponent is kept six. Razor Verge Thicket. Play a Breeding Pool. Pass the turn. I'd love to draw a Voyaging Seder or a Grazer for our turn. That would be amazing. With their Bloom Command. They hit mill over a Chariot and a Duress. Draw for turn. Dark Petition. We have to pass. They have land three. That's a turn three Grease Fang. Our hand might not be fast enough. So they can crew the chariot. And now they attack for four. And copy the cat. Yeah, our hand, I think, might not be fast enough here, which is insane. We have a turn four win, but I think our opponent's going to get us. Or get us. Okay. We're at 14. They have 10 power on the board. Galaged Recovery. Play the field. Rafine's Informant. They have Parhelion. We are dead. Unfortunate. I mean, our hand was really good. They never even played a discard spell. They just had it the whole time. This is why I don't like boarding out the green creatures. <laughs> we didn't need consistency this game. We needed speed. That's a bummer. All right. Resubmit. On the play for game three. Wow. Yeah, this hand is good. Keep. The Sage you pass. This could be a turn three. Blooming Marsh. Vessel. Yep. Draw for turn. That's a good one. Let's play the Voyaging Seder. Temple Garden. Wow. They're going to give us a chance at a turn three here. Can we do it? I wonder if the Colorless Offstage is going to bite me. Okay, so we'll play Lotus Field. Untap. Half for three blue. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Black. Untap. Green. So this gives us ultimatum on turn three. We'll choose. Oh, they conceded three turn threes this league. Let's go. Yes. Love it. Wow. I've never had, like, I think it, like, in my entire history playing this deck, I might have had two turn threes. And in this league, I had three. Uh, big fan of Voyaging Seder. I could even see myself adding in a third. Um, 
Really impressed by this card today. Holy moly. We didn't actually end up facing the most popular deck in the format, which is Mono Green Devotion, which is why we wanted four Besages, but Voyaging Seder, MVP. You could consider a third. I think if you wanted to play a third, you could cut a land because there are some lists on Goldfish just playing flat out 20 lands for Val again. It becomes a little bit risky with your Arboreal Grazers because you have less lands to put into play, but it's a choice you can make. You could cut the third ultimatum, but I like having three ultimatums, especially if you're trying to turbo into Seder Wayfinder. So you're running out of slots. If you really, really want the third Seder, I think it has to be over the 21st land. But I love the list. We lost to the one wonky control deck featuring Lotus Field that happened to have answers for our thought distortions. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you lose to 1% of the field. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I absolutely loved this list. I would definitely run this back. That was a sweet one. See you later. Keep storming. What you should do is like, comment, and subscribe because there's no better way to support us. And if you enjoyed this video, head over to moxfield.com and follow us there. It's truly the best deck website on the internet. We update all of our decks there regularly with the latest and greatest technology, so you're always up to date. Once again, go check out Moxfield, and thank you for watching.